They are famous for the saffron. Yeah. They used to pay their soldiers with saff saffron. Uh, is it? I just heard the guy say that. Uh, <laughs> no, but I read that. Sneaking on tours. <laughs> yeah, but one afternoon, definitely enough. We've left San Gimignano. There was a brief moment of downhill, straight away and uphill. Uh, and now should be about two hours, maybe three, to arrive in Siena where we do a break, have a quick look at the city and head towards Torenieri. That's the itinerary for today. Let's see if you make it. So far we've been, we've been really good with our itinerary. We've been arriving at the places we wanted to see. So that's pretty good. Let's see how it goes today. There'll be lots of up hills and down hills, I think. But that's Tuscany. Can't complain, the view is amazing. And uh, yeah, right now, not so much. Just after leaving San Gimignano, we saw a massive poppy garden. Even though we were late to arrive in Siena, we had to stop for some takes. Whoops! And then carry on cycling. Or not. So check it out. Uh, out of the blue, yeah, we were cycling and then suddenly came this door, like medieval door, and it, like we were like, let's get inside. Wow. On the way to Siena, we just found this town and decided to cross it. And then we found out about this town. It's called Colle. How is it called? You just checked, T, come checked, on! I forgot, I'm sorry. Colle di Valdelsa, exactly. Colle di Valdelsa. It's written here. Colle di Valdelsa. So, it's very medieval, it's really, um, really cute, really charming, and offers this beautiful view. Like Tuscany landscape. We were meant to be in Siena by now, but as we saw this town, we had to stop, so we are late. Now it's about 2 o'clock and it should take another hour to arrive in Siena. Hopefully it's not going to rain, it doesn't look like it's going to, it's going to rain. So we are heading to Siena and I see how it is. Just after we left Colle di Valdelsa, the first of many problems happened with our bike. The weight of the trolley was too heavy and it was bending the metal which was holding it. This metal consequentially was pressing the gears. Little did I know the headache this would give me in the future. But for this time, as I changed the gears to the lightest one, the chain got stuck in between the wheels and the bicycle cassette. Being very stuck in there, I couldn't get it out. Luckily, we had internet thanks to Traveller's Wi-Fi and we called our mechanic. 
The only thing he could do for us, though, was tell us to pull the chain as strong as possible to release it from the wheel. It took us a while, but we managed. The problem is, after that, besides having all my gears wrong, I couldn't use the lightest gear. And the bike was heavy. And I was in Tuscany. After two hours trying to fix the bike, and then the brakes, and then the chain, and then everything, then the rain came, Anyway, after two hours, maybe three, we are finally going back to the road. We need to reach at least Siena today. We managed to fix Thiago's bike, like the chain that got stuck in the wheel. But he has some problems with the... Okay, you're gonna see written there somewhere in the screen. So he has a problem with that. He doesn't know how to fix it. Uh, we called the guy that made our bikes which like yes is also our friend Luigi so he tried to help us but he said it would be a bit complicated with uh, like over the phone we decided to take the road to hit the road again with the bikes the way they are and at night like in a couple of hours at 7 p.m. We're gonna make like a video, uh, a Skype call with him with video because then we can show exactly what is wrong with the bike and hopefully he will be able to help us. Otherwise we will have to go to, a, to someone like a specialized person. Let's see. But after all this time we lost with the problem with Thiago's bike, I don't think we'll be able to go anywhere after Siena. The other problem we have is that the weather is quite bad, so it can start raining at any time again. This kind of thing that happened with Chi, like with his bike, you know, it really slows us down. Then we get frustrated because we don't know how to fix it. Um, so, These were things that were like things that happen and you are not prepared and you are not expecting it. But at the end, this is about why we love so much traveling because I think when you get into a routine, it's difficult that things happen on an unexpected way, right? I mean, on a routine, you kind of have everything planned. Your days, your hours, your weeks, everything is kind of pre-arranged and pre-planned. When you travel, you don't have control of anything. You're not in your environment. And there are just so many things that can go wrong. And um, it's cool because when these things go wrong and you have to deal with them, in the best way possible because you are far away from everyone and from everything and if you decide to get in a bad mood it's gonna screw you even more so i don't know the feeling i have is that um when these things happen and you're traveling it kind of teaches you a lesson of how to deal with the unexpected We really wanted it to arrive in Siena as soon as possible. And after all the problems with the bike, we could just have carried on cycling. But Tuscany just wouldn't allow us to do it. I guess it's the price we pay for such beauty. Right after we decided to carry on cycling and the weather got better, we found the Monte Rigione. We had to stop again. Finally made it to Siena, but at the rush hour, so things are a bit tricky. At least people are respectful, the majority. <laughs> 